Hello and welcome to the 13th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the Masaryk Circuit in the Czech Republic. Starting on the pole for the first time of his career is Clay Gibson with Louis Ballard on his outside. Clay Gibson participated in the PCC Europe race where he had a first uh, lap incident between Dimitri Genkin and a few other cars. Genkin would go out of the race in that crash, but the race would be won by Grigory Novikovsky in the 66 car driving for Rus Autosport. He actually had a stint in the PCC Cup Series back in 2014 but uh, he sustained some injuries and uh, did not finish the season. Uh, going th further back through the field, there's Tom Wilson and Scott Wallen, who have had pretty good showings at the Hungaro ring. Looks like they're going to do so here today. As uh, we start to get closer to the uh, Vnukovo Airport race, which is an overcapacity event, uh, the entry list hasn't been released for that race yet, but it's looking to be possibly the biggest PCC Cup race we've ever seen in the series. Looks like we're going to have at least 150 cars uh, showing up to that one as we go further through the field. Kelly Blackwater, man, she has fallen all the way down in the championship. I believe she's outside the top 10 at this point in the standings as uh, you get your usual suspects at the back of the field. Cale Bernfart Jr., uh, Dan Ferrey, Ryan Matthews. And uh, starting in the final position is actually Ben Atkins, who crashed on his qualifying lap and will start in last. And with that, Clay Gibson leads the field to the green flag. Louis Ballard on his outside. Gibson's going to get a jump as cars start to fan out three and four wide in the back there. You see Ramsey Cockner making a move. Barney Ward forces it four wide going into the first turn, and it looks like they're going to get through without a problem. Clay Gibson still holding the inside. Now he's on the outside, still side by side with Louis Ballard. Uh, Clay Gibson looks like he's going to clear him here coming down this stretch. And Clay Gibson, the Australian, filling in for the injured Lenny Jacobs, is going to continue to hold the lead as uh, we go through here. Turns uh, five, I believe. And down the straightaway, Clay Gibson definitely gets a good run, and he's going to pull out ahead of Louis Ballard. Gibson continues to lead at the end of the first lap, and uh, he's really starting to impress uh, some of the owners here in the PCC Cup Series who... Uh, Paloma Autosport, I've heard, might actually keep him on after this season uh, as the fourth driver. Uh, that is a possibility. He might also end up getting a contract with, I've heard his name tossed around with Clayson Enterprises as being a possible driver over there. So Clay Gibson has a bright future ahead of him here in the PCC Cup Series. Championship points leader coming into this race. Uh, Ike Durbin is running in 15th place on lap three. He's dropped a few positions from his qualifying run. And uh, he's stuck between Andy Lambert there in the 34 and Josh Marshall in the 18, who's having a pretty good run himself. Uh, Ike Durbin trying to hold his championship lead and build it. He's uh, fallen just a little bit to Brian Gallagher, but here's one of his championship rivals, Gaspar de Souza, who's looking to gain. He's running up in fifth place, and uh, he's looking to have a very strong showing. He was having a good strong run at the Hungaro ring before his car failed on him multiple times. He still made it to the end of that race, but Gaspar D'Souza doing what he can to close the gap between himself and Ike Durbin in the championship. Brian Gallagher doing the same. He's running in 10th place right now in this Pokemon Platinum car, and uh, he's second place in the championship right now, less than a full race behind Ike Durbin, and it looks like he's going to close that gap even further if things stay the way they are which uh, Brian Gallagher, man, he's really been on a hot streak on these road courses as Clay Gibson uh, looks like Louis Ballard and Barney Ward have broken away from the rest of the field. Uh, these cars are clearly the class of the field. Barney Ward is uh, a bit of a surprising one. I didn't expect to see him up front, but those Team Ben Atkins cars on the road courses are dangerous as Clay Gibson continuing to hold the lead over Louis Ballard. Ballard has been setting slightly faster times, but... Gibson continues to hold the gap as uh, we take a look at one of the other championship contenders, uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, who, can, who currently runs last, dead last. Looks like the same as Hungaro Ring, actually. Uh, he does look a little bit closer to John Jefferson this time, but uh, far and away, the 70 car is the slowest car on track, and I'm not sure uh, why he hasn't really improved I believe he's getting the same equipment as his teammates, and Duncan Cobb seems to be doing alright in that, 
as Ben Atkins has already made his way up to 26th place after the first five laps of this race. So he's almost in the top 25 after starting last. He crashed on his qualifying lap, uh, got a little loose in one of the turns and just spun off, but he's making his he's making a good effort to get back up towards the front, and he's slicing and dicing through cars. That's Alex Phillips right in front of him in 25th. Louis Ballard, second place, doing a fantastic job here. This is uh, easily his best round of the season, aside from the Hungaro ring, where he uh, he had a very good run going, but unfortunately got involved in an accident with Nicholas Korodovos early on in that race, which uh, prevented a top five, as Barney Ward looks like he's catching him just a little bit. But Louis Ballard, if he stays here, this will be his best run of the season, and he really needs a good showing as he is the worst of the Manicor cars. Barney Ward, as I mentioned before, running in third place, doing an excellent job. I understand that his team owner, Ben Atkins, is not pleased with his performance, and uh, this should turn things around with his team boss, I think. Now here's uh, Akio Gifu, who's running back in the field just a little bit, and oh my goodness! Did, uh, did Alex Phillips blow his braking point? Because he just... He did not slow down. Let's take a look here as uh, going on board with Alex Phillips to see what happened. And it looks like, oh no, Gifu had a problem. And uh, Phillips just didn't expect it and ran into both of them and sent him off the course. Uh, both cars would get towed back to the pits and would keep going, but would fall several laps down in the process as Phillips tries to get out of the gravel trap but would end up getting stuck. Ramsey Cockiner is having a fantastic race. He's running in fourth place right now. And uh, his nice cock racing team is uh, not doing fantastically in the owner, in the uh, owners and team championship. And uh, this run would really elevate them to uh, to get past that relegation point. They're not in relegation, but they're fairly close to the relegation mark. And a good top five finish for this team would do wonders in getting them out of uh, out of that danger zone. As he continues to hold up. Uh, Gaspar de Souza there. Another driver doing a fantastic job is Ingrid Hadeland, who is proving that that Hungaro ring was not that Hungaro ring run was not a fluke, as she runs up in ninth place as we reach the one quarter mark in this race, running right behind Tom Delgado. She's doing a fantastic job, and it looks like we're, we're starting to see signs of her when she was at the Williams Racing Team in 2014, where she was I believe she finished second at Road Atlanta in that car and had a few other strong runs on the road courses, so Ingrid Hadeland showing why she de deserves to be in the series. Sapphire Anderson having another strong run. Uh, she's in 12th place now, just past the one quarter mark. And uh, Sapphire Anderson didn't really expect much out of the Kiwi early in the season, but she's in the top 10 in points, just been very consistent, and uh, is probably going to be one of the stars of the future in this series if she keeps it up. Uh, she's doing a fantastic job as Alex Phillips comes out of the pits and is going to merge right in front of Lewis Jones and that I'm not sure that Lewis Jones is going to be too pleased about that as the hood is crumpled now on that 81 car but it doesn't look like it's serious enough. Why wasn't there any spotter communication between them as Alina Lazareva is uh, running in the top 12 now uh, and is hunting down her teammate Brian Gallagher, Alina Lazareva, the 2014 series champion, has really had a miserable season, and uh, she's really turned it up in the past couple weeks. She had a very strong run at the Hungaro Ring, she had a strong run at Road Atlanta, and now she's having a strong run here, as Ben Atkins now working his way up into the top 20. Uh, this is lap 13 of 40, and he's giving uh, Tom Wilson all kinds of fits. But Ben Atkins has been surging through the field. He got around Duncan Cobb last lap, and now he's uh, really pushing his way through the field. He's running lap times comparable to the leaders uh, back in this traffic, who are probably about two seconds off of the leader's pace. And he's really moving forward through the field. Akio Gifu has uh, created a little bit of a log jam here. Uh, not really blocking so much as being just fast enough that these... Uh, cars which are 12th through I believe 16th or 17th just can't get past and Gifu I mean there's nothing wrong with that but uh, should probably get out of the way at some point here's Preston Bell who is the best running of the Stefan's racing cars in 35th so Stefan's racing really has a long way to go before they can 
really work their way out of relegation, and these road courses are not helping matters. The Tanera Thunder GT is not a road course racing car. It is designed for, for speedways and super speedways, and uh, this succession of tracks is really going to hamper them as Clay Gibson continues to lead. Barney Ward has fallen back a little bit, but it looks like Louis Ballard is hanging right there with him as uh, Clay Gibson is dropping back just a little bit. His pace has dropped just slightly compared to Louis Ballard's, and you can tell as Ballard is right up there with him as uh, Barney Ward has dropped just a couple seconds behind. Uh, Josh Marshall having a good run here in the top 15, and unfortunately... Oh, there's he's starting to slow down. Looks like a tire's gone down on the 18 car, which is a tough break because this was looking to be a potential top 10 for Josh Marshall. He is, I believe, the only driver uh, who has run every race this season who does not have a top 10. Uh, however, he is, I believe, 22nd in points coming into this race, so he's been doing a consistent job of staying up near the front. And there's Ben Atkins, who's worked his way past Greg Woodard and is up in the teens now. So Ben Atkins really on a roll as Clay Gibson coming around here. He's coming to lap Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, uh, closing in on halfway. He tries to commit wide. That's not going to be a smart move as Louis Ballard's going to take advantage, go side by side with him down the front straightaway. And it looks like Louis Ballard is going to have the advantage depending on what Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer does here. He's going to cut off uh, Louis Ballard as uh, looks like Ballard's going to sneak on by and... Uh, Looks like Gibson's going to make it three wide, but he's going to get held up. And Louis Ballard to the lead over Clay Gibson. Uh, this lap traffic really hurt Gibson. And I don't think he was too sure on what way to go. But Ballard to the lead. And look at that gap that he's already pulled. As I mentioned before, Ballard was slightly faster than Gibson. Uh, and he had been closing for several laps. But look at this gap that he's already pulled. He's already about a second ahead. And that gap is only going to increase as he gets clean air, as I believe that car, the Saturn that he's driving, is more aerodynamically advantaged than the Sar Eagle. So, uh, looks like Ballard is going to continue padding his lead as James Hewitt in the 155 is the first car to commit to green flag pit stops here on lap number 19, uh, just before halfway. And I think that this might be slightly too early, we'll see about that as it looks like Ballard's getting held up by John Jefferson now, who's getting ready to go a lap down just a couple laps later. And, uh, oh, he's really getting held up. I'm not sure why Ballard hasn't pulled out, but Jefferson is all over the place. Oh, my goodness. And looks like Gibson's going to try and make a move. They're going to go three wide, side by side. Uh, he finally gets pushed out of the way. And it looks like Gibson is going to try and no he doesn't have the momentum he's going to slot back in place right behind louis ballard but he is right there see if he can't make a move no he's going to drop back just a little bit and it looks like ballard will retain the lead for now here uh just past halfway ben atkins now moving up almost into the top 10 i believe he's in 12th place at this point uh lap 23 of 40 and he's hunting down uh Ian Elias there, who's having a great run in the 32 car. Uh, Ian Elias has been quietly working his way through the field and has stayed in the top 15 all race, but looks like Ben Atkins is going to take advantage of that and get around him in the next lap or so. Louis Ballard now uh, working through some heavy lap traffic. There's Dan Ferre, Alex Phillips there in front of him. Looks like Barry Juveno and uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. are the next victims to go a lap down as these cars are running quite back in the field. And it looks like Barney Ward has made a pass around Clay Gibson for uh, second place, as I believe Gibson was jammed up behind uh, Dan Ferre. These lap cars are giving Gibson fits, as it looks like uh, he's going to get boxed in here behind Phillips and have Ferre alongside, and Barney Ward is going to pull out just a little bit of a gap over Clay Gibson, as, uh, man, these lap cars aren't giving Gibson any room. And, uh, okay, there he goes. He gets around Phillips there pretty easily. As I think he realized he might get a penalty for blocking if he keeps that up. And Ballard has already gotten around uh, Juveno and Bernfart Jr. without much of a problem as Barney Ward continues to try to hunt him down. Here's Ingrid Hadland running in 8th place, and she's pulling off to the side for some reason and dropping back just a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on with that car. And... That's a little bizarre. She's going to let uh, Alina Lazareva go by 
for eighth place, so something might be up with that uh, with that 20 car. I'm not too sure, because she's dropped back the pace just a little bit. Look at all that time that she's lost to Tom Delgado there. And just let Alina Lazareva go, so something might be up with this 20 car. We're going to have to take a look and see, uh, confer with the team and see what happened. But uh, you can see it, the time that she's losing there to Lazareva. There, something might be wrong, but... Just the next lap, she seems to be fine, as uh, she's back up to pace, just might have just horribly taken those turns. That's a bit odd, we're going to have to keep looking into that as Clay Gibson managed to get around Barney Ward for second place again, uh, using the lapped car of Barry Juvenile as a pick, as it looks like a tire's gone down. No, that's, that's more severe of an issue, that's not a tire, uh, that's definitely something internal on the 366 is... Uh, She's reporting a massive loss of power. Barbara Burt is. Uh, she's reporting a massive loss of power in the engine. We initially thought that was a tire, but no, this is something much more terminal. And Barbara Burt is going to be the first car to drop out of the race here, uh, just past the uh, 5 eighths mark, lap 25 of 40. As looks like uh, Louis Ballard's going to be the first car to come into the pits uh, for green flag pit stops. First of the leaders, I mean. As Louis Ballard comes in. And uh, I don't see any other takers further back at this point, but Clay Gibson's going to stay out, and if he needs to catch up, which he does, he needs to run a fantastic lap here uh, to try and close the gap. No interference from lapped cars, but unfortunately, it looks like he's going to get that in the form of Kurt Pliskin, and there's Pliskin right in front of him, and I think he held him up just a little bit a couple turns ago, but he's going to dive into the pits and... Uh, hopefully be able to close that gap between himself and Louis Ballard as a first win would be tremendous for Clay Gibson here as a couple other cars are going to start following in. There's uh, Corradovos and Cockiner, Hadeland comes in and Gallagher comes in uh, but it looks like Louis Ballard is going to win the battle as there's Clay Gibson uh, way back about five or six seconds back behind as we had an incident with Brian Gallagher coming out of the pits he's going to pull out and there's Greg Woodard. Woodard's going to bump him and get into the quarter panel and send him careening into the tire barriers there. That's going to take uh, Gallagher and Woodard uh, back to the garage. Woodard would continue on. Uh, he'd come out of the pits a few laps down. And Barney Ward really getting held up by lap traffic here with Kurt Pliskin. Pliskin is giving him no room whatsoever as he's having to swing wide to get around. And this is going to kill Barney Ward's momentum. Uh, it doesn't look like Barney Ward is going to be anywhere near the front of the field after he comes out of the pits, unfortunately. Uh, so a strong run ruined by lap cars is Jerry Myatt is also coming into the pits at the same time Ryan Matthews. And oh my goodness, look at this. He's going to have to slow down and uh, just killing all of his momentum that he had. So Barney Ward picked the worst time to come into the pits. There's Gaspar de Souza coming in behind him. Uh, looks like he's got a little bit clear of a pit road for him to come out. And Lewis Jones, as he merges from the pits, there's Daniel Sharp. And they're going to actually make contact there. And Daniel Sharp is going to send him off careening into the tire barriers, and he's going to go out of the race just like Brian Gallagher did. Uh, just lack of communication between spotters, as Louis Ballard now has opened up at almost a 10-second lead uh, out of the pits. He is clear in a way going to win this race unless something happens uh, like he gets held up by lap traffic but Ballard seems to have negotiated lap traffic much better than Gibson has here today as Barney Ward is way back he uh, actually is reporting a loose wheel so Barney Ward's gonna come into the pits once again uh, just past the three-fourth uh, mark of this race and uh, Barney Ward that's really unfortunate pit crew was probably understandably frustrated that he got held up by lap traffic, tried to do a rush job, and didn't secure all the wheels properly as we check back in with our championship leader, uh, Ike Durbin. He's running in 13th place, just kind of leisurely going about his race, staying out of trouble, and doing what he can to maintain his championship lead. That's really all he needs to do, as he's got a pretty massive lead at this point with Brian Gallagher going out. But looks like Gaspar de Souza is going to do all he can to try and reduce that lead as he's running in fifth place. He's got 
Uh, looks like Ramsey Cochner and Corradovo's managed to get up to third place in front of him, so uh, Gaspar D'Souza doing what he can to stay in the championship hunt, and uh, looks like H.J. Wheat Farmer is trying to mitigate whatever his disaster is of a day. He's in 36th place, so he's gained a few positions, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to keep him uh, nearly as close as some of the others. As Sapphire Anderson has reported a massive loss of power in her V car and is dropping way back, uh, that car is down at least one cylinder. As, uh, you can see some of the excess gas pouring out of the uh, exhaust there. That's not a very good sign. That car is backfiring. And Sapphire Anderson was running up in the top 15 when this happened, and uh, crew's telling her to stay out on track until it blows up. Uh, we are close enough to the end of the race that she should be able to make it to the end of uh, to the checkered flag, but it's not going to be a pretty result uh, for Sapphire Anderson. Here's a driver who's uh, actually having a pretty good run. Frank Azzaretto, haven't really talked about him all season. He's had an awful year. Uh, his one good run was in that fuel mileage race at Chicago, where he managed to get a top 10. But he's worked his way into the top 20, and he's only just now going a lap down. So uh, props to Frank Azzaretto for having a pretty decent run. Uh, it's nothing spectacular, and uh, I believe this is the third car for that team, so I'm not expecting too much. But Azzaretto having a pretty good run, and so is uh, Daniel Sharp, who's up in 19th place. He's uh, been very consistent. I don't believe he's had a finish worse than 27th all season. And uh, Daniel Sharp is just Mr. Consistency here as he's really just kind of stayed out of trouble all season and hasn't really gotten in too many wrecks and he's up in the top 20 in points because of it as Nicholas Corradovo is looking to have his best run since Surfer's Paradise which was the first race of the season. Uh, looks like, oh, Joe Craig's slowing down there in the back, but Nicholas Cordova is looking for his first podium since the first race of the season, so this is a big run for that 39 car, and yeah, Joe Craig, uh, something broke on that car, and he's going to stop on the track. Uh, they would tow that car back to the pits, and he would keep going. Here's Tom Wilson and uh, Andy Lambert having good runs. They're both up in the top 15, and uh, Tom Wilson, son of a uh, Trans Am driver back in the 90s and early 2000s, Don Wilson, he won the championship a couple times, I believe, and I believe it was 2002 and 2004 he won the championship, but Tom Wilson, uh, probably Johnson Racing's best road course driver, doing battle with Andy Lambert, who's been in the series for almost 20 years at this point, and uh, the young battling the old, and looks like Tom Wilson, he's a uh, Gonna get a top 15 out of this one. Just a couple laps from the finish, and Ingrid Hadland has dropped off the pace. You can see there James Hewitt getting by her, and this looks like a legitimate issue. I don't think that this is uh, whatever happened with that car before, because she is still off the pace, and uh, Hewitt's pulled off quite a quite a gap. And we'll see what the problem is here. Looks like a sounds like a tire is delaminated on the 20 car, which is a tough break for this car. She was running up in the top 10 and uh, she's lo losing quite a bit of time, so this isn't whatever happened before, as uh, there's Ben Atkins really catching up. So uh, she's gonna bring that car into the pits, get that tire changed, and uh, head back out. Unfortunately, not the finish that she was hoping for at all. Same thing with Sapphire Anderson, who's about to go a lap down. Anderson was is uh, in 18th place right now, and uh, still gonna be a top 20 result for her, uh, but it could have been a top 10 or a top 15. Uh, last lap battle between Ryan Matthews and Kurt Pliskin for 25th place, right in front of a bunch of lead lapped cars. And oh my goodness, that was not called. That was uncalled for. That was really not necessary. As Kurt Pliskin just dumped Ryan Matthews from 25th, he's going to continue on. Uh, Ryan Matthews is, but uh, I'd imagine the officials are going to want to have a talk with Kurt Pliskin as we go on board with him. And, uh, wow. Wow, he just hung on Ryan Matthews' bumper all through that turn and just dumped him for no reason. Last lap, too. And uh, on the last lap as well, uh, Ramsey Cockner blows his load all over the track. He would make it back to the pits, but from fifth place, he's uh, gonna 
it's going to be a hard effort for him to try and get uh, a top 10 finish at this rate. But I think he's got enough of a gap that he might be able to do so. As he's going to limp that car back to the pits. And we've got a good battle here between the TBA cars and Tom Delgado who managed to blitz him uh, for his top 10 position. As Ben Atkins managed to take advantage of all of this and get around his teammates. So Ben Atkins, uh, looks like TBA is going to finish nose to tail at the finish here. And uh, what an effort by them to do so. Even though Barney Ward was running quite well. Hewitt's pit strategy is going to work out, and Ben Atkins is going to bring it home ahead of all of them. But Louis Ballard is going to triumph here today as he comes through the final couple turns, and Louis Ballard will win his first race of the season at the Maserick Circuit in the Czech Republic. Taking a look at the results, Clay Gibson held on to finish in second place, almost 20 seconds back from Louis Ballard. Nicholas Cordova's got his first podium since Surfer's Paradise, and a fantastic showing by him. Gaspar de Souza and Alina Lazareva round out the top five, and good showings for both drivers. Ramsey Cockiner, despite blowing his load on the last lap, finishes in sixth place, ahead of the Team Ben Atkins trio of Atkins, Hewitt, and Ward. And Tom Delgado fell back to the final position in the top ten. But still, Tom Delgado seems to be good for getting just top tens, not top fives this season. Ike Durbin, the championship leader, finishes in 11th place doing what he needs to do to maintain his championship lead. Ian Elias in 12th, Scott Wallen, good run for him in 13th, Tom Wilson and Andy Lambert, 14th and 15th. Ingrid Hadeland had that late pit stop and fell down to 16th place, but it's still a top 20 for uh, the Norwegian driver Duncan Cobb in 17th. Didn't talk about him all day, but he managed to finish on the lead lap. Last car to do so, Sapphire Anderson. Despite losing a cylinder late in the going, 18th place, Daniel Sharp, and Frank Azzaretto has a good run rounding out the top 20. And now taking a look at the points, you can see that Ike Durbin has over a one full race lead over Gaspar D'Souza, who's up to second place in the standings. James Hewitt is third, moving around Brian Gallagher, who had a, who uh, fell out of the race early. Tom Delgado up to fifth place, Ben Atkins in sixth, first time I believe we've seen him in the top 10 all season. H.J. Wheat Farmer falls down to seventh place. Uh, after a miserable showing once again, Sapphire Anderson and Ian Elias, uh, Oceanian drivers, doing a fantastic job up in the top 10, 8th and 9th. Barbara Burt, who had her issues today, uh, actually finished in last place, drops down to 10th in the standings. Mark Burt, 11th. Louis Ballard with his win up to 12th place. Duncan Cobb doing a fantastic job in 13th. Nicholas Corridovos with that podium up to 14th over Kelly Blackwater, who's free fallen through the standings. Just a few races ago, she was uh, in the top five in the standings. Now she's down to 15th. Andy Lambert in 16th. John Jefferson free-falling uh, as he has been unable to get to come to grips with these road courses in 17th. Tom Wilson in the top ten, in the top 20 in 18th. Daniel Sharp makes an appearance in the top 20 in 19th. And Akio Gifu rounds out the top 20. And now looking at the team standings, we have our first two teams to crack the four-digit mark as Manicore Engineering and Paloma Autosport have eclipsed 1,000 points uh, for the first time this season. Only real changes we've had is Double B Motorsports drops from 3rd to 5th, uh, Johnson Racing drops from 9th to 10th, and uh, the relegation teams, Accelerator Motorsports, Steffens Racing, and Lucas Motorsports continue to fall behind the top 11 teams. Uh, it's not looking good for all three of them. Uh, Accelerator Motorsports and Lucas Motorsports especially, they've been in relegation for nearly three-fourths of the season at this point.